nation is covered by God. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of prophecy, God, reign in this place. Father, let your presence and your power reign in this place. Holy Ghost, have your way in this building. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place. Father, we bind up any witch. We bind up any warlock. We bind up any soothsayer. Father, we bind up any high priest. We come against, Father, in the name of Jesus, any witch doctor that had an agenda against this meeting. Father, let the joke be on them. I pray that anybody that has a picture on a demonic altar, it blows up in their face. Let them know, God, that they played with the wrong one. You will not be mocked. If you said we was covered by God, you meant it. Y'all keep praying.
We glorify your name, God. You're welcome here, God. Oh, you're welcome here, God. Because we want to see your face. Show us your glory in this place. You're welcome here, oh God. You're welcome here. You're welcome here, oh God. God, make your presence known. God, make your presence known. Fill the room, God, fill the room. Fill the room, God, fill the room. Eria si kere o sana ne ase. E braba si kere o si bravo ko sana ne ase. Fill the room, God, fill the room. God, we bless you. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are. For there is none like you, God, in all of heaven or in all the earth. You alone are worthy of glory, O oh God. You alone are worthy of praise, O oh God. And so we come to you right now, Lord God, and ask that you would receive our worship. We come to you in spirit, O oh God. Yes, God, we lay down all flesh, Lord God. Let no flesh glory in your presence, God. We come to you in spirit, God. We come to you in truth. For now is the time, Lord God, that the Father is seeking such that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Have your way in this place, God. So fill the room, fill the room. Fill the room, fill the room, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. That's all. Sing, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Sing, fill the room, yeah, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, Holy Spirit, sing Holy
Sing Holy Spirit. Sing Holy Spirit. Sing Holy Spirit. Sing Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We want to see your face, Holy Spirit. We want to feel your power, Holy Spirit. Sing Holy Spirit Holy Spirit So Holy Spirit You are welcome Yeah, come flood Come flood Your glory Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come flood this place. Oh, sing your glory, God. Yeah, yeah. To the
Come on, let's just begin to fill this place with the sound of worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. We welcome you in this place. Yes, God, we welcome you in this place. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. come on, lift it up, lift it up. We welcome you in this place, God. Hey, shake it, hey, oh, son, I see. Hey, bravo, co, son, I say, baby, Casey. He cut us, son, I say, bravo, co, son, I say, baby, Casey. We welcome you, God. Yes. We welcome you, Jesus. Oh, oh. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, oh. Consume fire, sweet. This is holy. This is holy. This is holy. This is so come. to me.
more time. Bow down. We worship you. Oh, worship you. We bow down, bow down in worship. Enter in. Enter in. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Sweet perfume. You're awesome. You're awesome. This is holy. Sing, this is holy ground. This is holy. Sing, this is holy ground. This is holy ground. And this is holy ground. So calm, so calm. We worship you, God, 
in you e shekere o san ani asi pedekis so show us your glory show us your glory in wonder and surrender we fall down show That's all. Sing, show us your glory. Show us your glory. In wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let us Sing, show us your glory, show us your glory, show us your glory, and wonder and surrender we fall down. Show us your glory, show us your glory. Change. 
Say 
heavens up. So I will let. Yes, God. I will exalt thee. I will, I will let up. Cause you are my God. You are my God. One more time, I will exalt you. I will. I will exalt me. I will. I will exalt thee. I will exalt thee. Cause you are. You are my God. Come on, let's just lift up. Like my sis said the other day, tongues of fire. <laughs> Come on, if you have your heavenly language, let's go ahead and just begin to lift that up and fill this place. Hey, let's just birth something in the spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Let's speak the perfect will of God over this meeting. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just lift that up. Hey, que de os sana ya si bravo pos. Y baba ka sana ya. Y shakara si que bravo pos. Si bravo pos sana ya si bebe que se que bravo pos. Si bravo pos sana ya se. Si bravo pos sana ya se. Y cara se que de os sana ya si bravo pos sana ya si bravo pos sana ya. Y cara se bravo pos.
fire fall down mm -hmm. We want to see the fire fall down Fire fall down The fire fall down The fire fall down Yeah Floodgates sing open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open. <laughs> sing let it rain. God, yes. Let it rain. Sing open the flood Let it rain. 
let it rain. Sing, open the floodgates. Let it ring. Open the floodgates. Here I am. Here I am to say that you're mine. You're all together, love. gave up everything so we should give up everything I gave to you withholding nothing withholding 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 I surrender I surrender all to you everything Withholding nothing, withholding 
Everything I ever I give to you, Jesus. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding. Withholding. Withholding nothing. Withholding. Let's just lift up of the sound of worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we glorify your name, God.
you have a hum for him. Your hum to be warfare. It can be off tune. I heard the Lord say, sing unto me a new song. One thing I love about God is that he wants us to come to him like a child. And I think praise is such an undertaught subject in the body of Christ as far as warfare is concerned. But your praise to God literally kills the enemy. It can't get no plainer than that. And when God says sing unto him a new song, that means a song that you made up. Like, I don't know if you watch kids, but they make up stuff all the time. Like, nothing makes sense to kids. And so when I say even your hum, even if you're insecure about your sound or you feel like you can't sing or... Because you're not singing to me or your neighbor. You're singing to your dad. Like, he's literally our dad. So when you sing some... Hmm, There's a sound. There's a sound that precedes the action. That when you send the sound out and it's a worship unto God, like that, that, that sounds like a love song, right? They said in Second Chronicles when they when they wanted to worship the beauty of his holiness. They literally sang, your mercy endured forever. They were singing a love song to God. And that love song to God literally sent ambushments against the enemy. It literally sent angels out that kill your That sound. In the realm of the spirit sends out angels to deal with what you need it dealt with. Don't underestimate praise. Don't underestimate your offbeat, off tune praise. Don't underestimate your hum. Don't underestimate your sound. Don't underestimate you making up a sound to God, making up a song, a sound to God. It's easy to make up a, it doesn't have to make sense. You're a child. So let's sing unto God just for a few seconds a new song. I love you, God. 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 I love you. I love you, God. I love you. I love you, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're wonderful to me. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're wonderful. You're beautiful in all your ways. You're beautiful in all your ways. 
You're beautiful in all your ways. If you said it, I believe it. It's funny, turn into a rap. If you said it, I believe it. If you said it, I believe it, cause you are God. It will come to pass, it will come to pass. He cannot lie, he cannot lie. It will come to pass, it will come to pass. He cannot lie, he cannot lie. It will come to pass. It will come to, this is a prophetic word. He cannot lie, he cannot lie. It has come to pass, it has come to pass. Cause you are good and you are God. It has come to pass, it has come to pass. You cannot lie, you cannot lie. It has come to pass, it has come to pass. Cause you are good. I was um I was so interested in Exodus 3:14 where he says, I am that I am. And it's like something we've read all the time, but you know, I love looking up words and I've never looked up, I am that I am. Can you turn up my mic just a little bit? And I, I looked up the word I am. Yeah, I was blown away. It means to come to pass. So when he said, tell them, when Moses was like, who am I gonna tell them sent me? He said, tell them I am that I am sent you. I am means what I said is gonna come to pass. That's not all it means. It also means what I said is going to take place. It means it's going to appear. It means it's going to be instituted and established. I am means to stand. I am means that I said it was done. I am means it is finished. I am means that it broke. I am also means the word beacon. Now, y'all know why that's excited for all of you that joined our fast. We did a lot of breaking. Gosh, don't you just love when everything comes together? That he said in Jeremiah, is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces? When you look up the definition of the word rock, it means stronghold. When you look up the definition of the word stronghold, it means a fortress. That this thing has been a stronghold, has, that, that, that spirit of perversion has had a stronghold on your mind. The spirit of molestation, incest on your bloodline has had such a stronghold. The spirit of insanity or mental illness in your bloodline has had such a stronghold. The spirit of addiction or infirmity or cancer or diabetes or early death has had such a stronghold. The spirit of miscarriage and the spirit of fibroids have had such a stronghold that it built a fortress around it to protect it. That's what a stronghold is. That's why you can't go into normal prayer and kill it. Because it's protected. It's actually in a castle. And you know, like a castle has a moat around it that keeps it protected. It also has watchmen. Uh-oh, she's coming to pray again. Let's make her sleepy when she reads her Bible. Uh-oh, she's coming to pray again. Let me make them call. Uh-oh, she's getting ready to pray again. He's getting ready to pray again. Social media. I can get her, I can get him to scroll real quick. He'll lose. That's the fortress because it has a, it has a, it literally has its own fallen angels protecting it. So when he says, it's not my word, the word of God is a fire. And we know because we've studied that that fire is not a normal fire. It is a supernatural fire. It's actually called a theophany. 
A theophany is when you have an experience with God face to face. Moses and Gideon had that experience. It's called a theophany. It's also the wrath of God. It's the anger of God. So he's saying that this fire is not a normal fire. It's my anger upon that stronghold that's been trying to keep you in captivity when I let you go. And then he said, is it not like a hammer that breaketh? You know, as we studied, we realized in the Bible that anytime the Bible uses the word ETH, this is why I like reading KJV. When he says, saith, when he said, isn't not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, that means he said it over and over and over again. Whenever you say the word ETH, ITH, it means he did it over and over and over again. Say it to this mountain, say it to this valley of dry bones. That means you don't just say it one time, you do it over and over and over again until you see the dead thing live again. You do it over and over again until you see the dry bones turn into a great exceeding army. You do it over and over again until the rock breaks. He said, it breaketh. That means over and over and over again, this stronghold into pieces. So when I saw that the word I am meant break, and it means to separate into pieces as a result of a blow, suddenly and forcibly. That means that you just whamming at, you slamming at the enemy all times a day, all times a day, suddenly and forcibly, he don't know what hit him. It also means to interrupt or disturb, and I'm putting my own word here, a pattern. It also means a pause in work. So it was working, but you paused it because you were relentless in breaking this thing. So when you go to this, this stronghold and you said, I am that I am sent me to this infirmity of cancer in your bloodline. I am that I am sent me to the spirit of premature death on my bloodline. I am that I am sent me to the spirit of witchcraft in my bloodline. The word I am means broke. And then it means beacon. And I had to look up that word because I just simply didn't know what it meant. But beacon means a fire or a light that is set up in a high prominent position as a warning or a signal or a celebration. Isn't that powerful? Now I asked God what he wanted me to teach tonight and I do have a, I do have a, a subject, but I really feel led to just share some of these scriptures I've been reading because I believe that these are declarations for all of us in this season. I heard, no stand up. I'm gonna let y'all sit down when I get to the message. Isaiah 45, 19, he said, I the Lord speak righteousness and I declare things that are right. Cause what I'm giving you is your fire and your hammer. Isaiah 45, 19 says, I, the Lord, speak righteousness and I declare things that are right. Well, I don't know if I heard God. Maybe I got him wrong. He said, I only speak righteousness if I told you I can only declare what's right. Stop doubting me. That's what that hammer meant. That kills that stronghold of doubt. Isaiah 45, 19, I, the Lord, speak righteousness. How do you take that into prayer? Father, you said that you speak righteousness and everything that you declared is right. What does the word righteous mean? It means justice. What did we pray for the month of May? That the heavy hand of God slammed down the gavel, or in other words, a hammer, because a gavel is a hammer, that the heavy hand of God slams down the gavel of justice to rule this matter in your favor. Isaiah 35 verses 4 through 5 say to them that are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance even God with a recompense he will come to save you then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped Say to them that are of a fearful heart. I thought it was so fascinating that the word fearful here meant anxious or to be in a hurry or to be quick. Say to them that are in a hurry to get me to move, be strong and don't fear. Because I'm going to come with a vengeance. I'm going to avenge you speedily. I looked up the word come. It means to bring to pass. I am is still here. The I am that I am is in all of these scriptures. 
He said, even God with a recompense, meaning a recompense is a dealing. The, the dealing of the Lord is going to come upon your situation. The benefit of the Lord is going to come upon your situation. The, what you deserve, the word here, recompense means what you deserve is going to come. He's going to come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. You know the word ear means receiver of divine revelation? Do you know that when you're deaf, normally you can't speak right? Do you know that so many of you are spiritually deaf that anything you say don't sound like God no more? The next scripture was Joshua 21, 45. There fell not all, any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Tiffany. It all came to pass. I said, there fell not all of anything. There was no good thing that failed which the Lord spoke unto the house of Tiffany. It all came to pass. You see what I did there? You better put your name in there. The word failed means to fall short, to settle, or to lie. There was nothing that you settled for what you asked God for. He said, you're not going to have to settle. The word ought, O-U-G-H-T, means a promise. So there, there fell none of the promises or none of the good things, because the word thing also means promise, which the Lord spoke, declared, promised, or commanded unto the house of Israel. The word Israel means God prevails. The word Tiffany means manifestation of God. It all came to pass. What does I came to pass mean? I am that I... It's an open book quiz, guys. The NLT says, not a single one of all the good promises the Lord had given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he spoke came true. A word promise means a declaration or an assurance that one will do a particular thing or that particular thing will happen. It's a vow, it's an oath, it's a bond, it's a covenant, it's a commitment, it's a word of honor. God can't lie. He literally cannot lie. Isaiah 45 verses 2 through 3. I will go before you and I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and I will cut and sunder the bars of iron. Let me tell y'all why this set me up in a high praise. I will go before you. When you look up the word before thee, it means presence. So his presence is going to go before you. He's going to make the crooked places. The crooked places are proud places, high, uh, uh, lofty, people with pride situations that are prideful something like leviathan stopped in your way that is a crooked place i didn't even realize that he said anything that the spirit of pride thought that they were going to stop in your life i'm going to make it straight the word straight means justice it means prosperous he said i will break in pieces did you know one of the definitions of the word break in pieces is to give birth the, it also means to crush and to shatter the gates. Y'all, y'all, let me tell y'all something. I'm gonna whisper this. Anybody in here whose spouse is cheating on you, take this into prayer, okay? Because the word gates means an easily accessible woman. The word gates means crocodile jaws. He said, I will break into pieces the gate that this, because this woman was a gate. She was a portal to the demonic for your family. She's an easily accessible woman or man, depending on if your wife is cheating on you. He said, I'm going to break that into pieces. And I'm going to cut and sunder Bars of iron. Bars is fortress, a prison. It's exactly what we just got done talking about with a stronghold. And iron means oppression, harshness. So good. So good. And then the last one I want to leave you with is 
Isaiah 35, 1 through 2. The wilderness, and I've been hearing the word blossom. I mean, like I, like I saw the fly license plates. And I'm like, God, what are you saying about blossom? And I wasn't even studying it in the Bible, and I just happened to be in Isaiah 35, and I saw this word again. It said, the wilderness and the solidarity, the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The wilderness, I looked up the definition. Do you know it means speech? Do you mean that God, do you, do you know that God considers what you haven't been prophesying over your life, the wilderness and a desert? The desert, the wilderness, your speech and the solitary place. Solitary also means barren. If your life is not producing what God said, it's because your speech has been a wilderness. But now he said, the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad, which means joy. And the desert shall rejoice. Rejoice here means joy and to spin around. And blossom, blossom means to break forth. Blossom means to break out. Blossom means to fly. Blossom means to flourish. Blossom means to spring up. Blossom means to spread. And it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and with singing. So I want y'all to take that into your arsenal and I want you to do some deeper study on those scriptures, but I believe that our wilderness is turning into a blossomed wellspring and we are going to see what God promised this year, not next year, not in two years, this year. Because the I am that I am, he said it's coming to pass. So before you sit down, I had a vision before I got on the plane, or while I was on the plane, sorry. I had a vision, and uh, I wasn't quite asleep, but I also wasn't quite awake. I don't know what I was, somewhere in the middle. And um, my eyes were closed, and I was in a cemetery. There was fog all around, and I saw a tombstone, but it had the word meeting on the tombstone and I, I woke up and immediately I start, you know, I come against any, any, any meeting with the, with the spirit of death that, I mean, I was on that plane. You won't kill me. Die. I do not be playing with stuff like that. Got the word meeting on there. Really. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> wrong person <laughs> but it bothered me because it was so real it was so tangible I was there and so I heard the Lord said because I just assumed it meant meeting like there was a meeting with death and it could still mean that but God said look up the word meeting and it meant there's two definitions a group of people especially a member of society that are discussing something it also means a coming together of two or more people by arrangement or chance. So the revelation I got about that, because I asked God, was this a personal word and corporate? He said it was corporate. And what I got about that is that there are groups of people meeting for your death. But God reveals to cancel the plan of the enemy. The first thing I want you to know, because we're going to pray about that in one second, but I want you to know that all demons fear you. And we have total control over the enemy. I was just in Jamaica a few days ago and I ran into a witch. You know, you'd be like, how you know she a witch? Everybody, all black people think everybody a witch. I was sitting at a bonfire with my friends and she walked past and she was like, that looks so nice. And I was like, you're more than welcome to sit with us. It's like space for like 10 people. It was just us two. I said, you're more than welcome to sit with us. And she came and sat and she started telling us her life. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, ask her about voodoo. And I said, ma'am, is your family in voodoo? 
I don't have no cooth. She's like, you know, when, um, we'll call her Becky. She was like, you know, when her, you know, when her parents were, when she was younger, they had dowels and they would cut off the heads of chickens and sacrifice them. And she was always afraid of that kind of stuff. And I was like, okay. I said, what about you, Becky? Do you play around with dowels? She's like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't do that. I go, okay. Becky, are you a witch? She was like, well, she's like, what do you do? I said, I'm, a, I'm in ministry. Both of us are in ministry. And very rarely, and I gave her my Instagram page. And she goes, oh, my gosh, I just followed you. She's like, I, can, I love God. That's what she said. I love Jesus. Oh, my gosh, I love God. Me and my husband love God. She did this. My friend was like, oh, why you do this? She's like, because we've just been living together for 13 years. He's not technically my husband, but I was like, girl, you need to march home right now and tell that man to marry you. But back to you being a witch. She goes, no. And I was like, I think you're a witch, Becky. I don't know why. I said, maybe you're a blind witch. Maybe you don't know you're a witch. Maybe you were born into being a witch. Because she was so convinced. So then I say, what's your Instagram? I'm going to go to it. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it started with witching. She told me it. I said, Becky. She's like, oh my God, does that mean I'm one? And I was like, yeah, it does. True story. So now I'm like interested in her witch life. And she's talking about how, um, like when her mom passed, there was a hand that moved her hair out of her way and whispered in her ears to tell her. She goes on to say how her dog is dead, but she has a person that communicates her dead dog to her and tells her what her dog wants her to know. I was like, girl, Becky, you are totally a witch. Would you like to give your life over to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? She was like, huh, let me think. She said, I feel like I'm at the altar of fire right now. I was like, you are. And then my friend who I was with was getting ready to tell her something about me. And I said in front of her, I said, uh-uh, uh, don't tell her nothing about me. I said, because she know what she's doing. I'm not fooled. She can act stupid if she want. And she's staring at me while I said that. And I said, let me tell you something, Becky. I said, whatever, because I asked her if she wanted to relinquish her powers. And she was like, well, how am I going to hear anything anymore? Like, what am I going to do? And that's not odd. Most of the witches I deal with or I talk to, that's the first thing they say is like, I would love to, but this is advantageous. I know things. And they do. They practice their craft much more than Christians do. Can you hand me a tissue? And so she goes, um, she, couldn't, she couldn't let go of it. And I said, that's fine. I said, I want to pray for you. I said, I'm not going to cast these demons out of you. She said, do you think I have demons? I was like, oh, a legion. She's like, a legion? I was like, oh, for sure, Becky. You have a legion in there. I see. She said, do you see them? I was like, I don't need to see them. I'm telling you what I know. It's an army of demons in you. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that. And I was like, no, 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 no. You know, you know, you're not, you know. And so I didn't cast it out. She sat on the edge of the fire and the fire actually touched her back. And there was no breeze to blow it to her. She's like, oh my God, I got burnt. I said, and that's what you're going to spend eternity feeling like if you don't give your life to Christ. <laughs> but I said to her, I'm not going to cast this out of you because if I do it without your permission, it's going to just come back seven times worse. I'm just going to trust that this is a seed that was planted. Somebody else before you leave Jamaica will be the water and God will get the increase of your, of your deliverance. And we prayed over her. But the first thing I said was I, I bind up any voice that's trying to talk to you and tell you that this is not okay. She goes, oh my God, because they started to tell me they're trying to trick you. So the next day, oh, and then I told her, I said, I assure you, Becky, that your gift is no match for the gift I have. I said, I want to assure you, Becky, that your powers are no match for my powers because I serve the only true and living God. 
I said, do you do any grounding? And she's like, oh my gosh, I love to go into the forest and put my feet and just soak up the vibrations of the earth. I said, yeah, but witches be doing that. She goes, oh my God. So we saw her the next day at the, uh, at the resort. And I was like, Becky, did you give your life to Christ last night? She was like, I'm, they wouldn't let me. Why do I give you this random story? Not only because it's just very funny, but I also give you that story because there are so many people that are afraid of witches. And there are so many believers that are afraid to witness the witches and go to witches and tell them about Christ and minister to them because you have one thing you have to know for sure is that the, the Holy Ghost in you, they are no match for the power of God on the inside of you. Like easy, but we have to have full understanding. And what do I mean by that? If you go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 18, he says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind, having your understanding darkened and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of your heart. If you have blindness of your heart and if you have your understanding darkened, you might not want to go up against a witch. Because you have to go up against them knowing who you are. You have to have a full revelation and understanding about what you house on the inside of you. Ephesians 1.18 says, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. They have to be enlightened. So I just want to pray for three minutes. That's all we're going to give it. We're not going to give it no extra time than that. Three strong minutes. Because the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Not only on the face of this earth, but to the depths of hell where they originated. So when we pray, we're going to lose the manifestation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, tearing to pieces every design of the devil in the kingdom of darkness. We're going to come up against their meeting. We're going to cause derision to go, send confusion to them, send darkness to them, send derision to them, send fire to them, send hailstones of fire to them. Come on, we don't play with stuff like this. If they're having a meeting for your death, you can play if you want to. But God in his mercy showed it to us in the realm of the spirit before it came down on earth. So let's lift up our voice and let's pray. It's every man for themselves. Pray over your children. That the date with death has been canceled. In the name of Jesus, that the date with death has been canceled. In the name of Jesus, any witch, any warlock that is having a meeting for your death, anybody that is convening in a coven at the cemetery to dance on your grave, we declare the fire of God. Burn up their meeting place now. We send hailstones of fire to their house in the name of Jesus. Let the heavy hand of God, let the dealings of the Lord break to pieces every tombstone that was erected on your behalf. Let every picture placed on the tombstone of a witch with your face on it. Let it blow up in their face in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of confusion hit the house of everybody meeting and convening on your behalf. Father, we destroy the works of the enemy. This is why the Son of God was made manifest. We take the power and the authority given unto us in the name of Jesus Christ and we destroy, we break, we pull down, we expel, we exterminate, we terminate every plot and every plan of the enemy. Father, we declare that they are blinded in the name of Jesus Christ.
every monitoring spirit monitoring our lives we declare that they are blinded by the blood of Jesus Christ let their understanding be darkened let their meeting God fail let their phone lines fail when they mention our names let them pass out when they pray against us let them have heart attacks God if they pray against us if they don't repent first anybody that says over my dead body let it be so in the name of Jesus Oh, I see somebody in here with a diagnosis of throat cancer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that the anointing, that the anointing God slide through their throat, the anointing God, 
slide through their larynx father in the name of Jesus let this atmosphere be conducive to miracles Lord I pray God that as they lift up their voice and as they worship you God cancer disappears I declare that we will see a testimony Lord that when they go back to the doctor the x-ray will say we don't see anything father in the name of Jesus any woman in here scheduled for a mammogram because they saw something that acted funny I declare that everything in our bodies submit and obey to your word I declare that everything in our bodies bow to the name of Jesus and I declare that these breasts God belong to you come on you better pray and if it's not you intercede come on anybody attached to cover by God if they are on their deathbed right now come on let's speak to them let's speak to them come on get on and up out of there come on get up out of your bed and walk in the name of Jesus that will not be the bed you die on that will not be the bed you lay your last breath on you won't go till you say it's time to go pray not if you're attached to this ministry I call you out of the gates of hell I call you out of the jaws of death in the name of Jesus come forth come on if you keep the praise high if you keep the praise high there's an atmosphere that illness can't live in there's an atmosphere that infirmity cannot live in I think it's we've just had too much of the enemy harassing and molesting and and every fear of death in the name of Jesus every fear of death you wake up and the fear of death is just on your mind all day long we curse that thing at the root in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that we will live and we will not die to declare the works of the Lord the Word of God says that perfect love cast out all fear father rain on us your perfect love saturate us with your perfect love God we forgive come on most of this stuff is because y'all hate somebody and haven't forgiven them father we forgive because I'll be forgiven before I get up here so pray forgive them for what they did to you forgive them for who you wanted them to be and they couldn't be forgive them for lying on you forgive them for falsely accusing you forgive you forgive them for judging you by appearance and not according to righteous judgment forgive them for breaking your heart come on forgive them perfect love cast out all fear every spirit of heaviness every spirit of oppression every bitter spirit every spirit of resentment we cast it out of the loins of your people today in the name of Jesus every stronghold of bitterness every stronghold a bitterness that was scheduled for them to get cancer at the end of the year come on every stronghold of resentment that was scheduled to be an open door for the next plague that was headed this way come on every tear it down pluck it up root it out destroy it Jesus Jesus in the name of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in your name of Jesus Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. I declare that the date with death has been canceled.
I declare that your date with destiny stands. I declare that you will not miss your appointment in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that even your God will make even your enemies to rejoice over you. You know, at the beginning of the year, the message I taught was called your schedule for a new season. I believe that that was prophetic for all this year. I believe that that was the pivotal foundational message for this year. And what God was letting us know was that there's a new season coming and we need to get ready for that. That was such a powerful message. Such a powerful message. And all the messages, even in all the cover by God's kind of lead, lead up to this moment, right? It was just God preparing us. And what we learned during that cover by God was that what we see doesn't cancel out what God said. What we see does not cancel out what God said. And why that's important is because we are a people that live in a kingdom. We don't live in the world system, which means we don't live. The language we speak is a spirit. How we communicate is through the spirit. That's why he says we walk by faith and not by sight, which means that the second you look at the waves, you sink. Because our kingdom is based on faith. What does that look like? It looks like when God says it, that's all that matters. And when he says you walk by sight, it means that the second you get a phone call, the second you feel something on your body, the second you look at your bank account, you're all flustered, but he says, you're, not li you're now living in the world system because if you live in my kingdom, it doesn't matter what you see. What you see is only proof that you, stick, you can still see your eyes still work. But it's not proof that what I said is a liar. We spent time for all of this year destroying idols in our heart and declaring that the curse has been broken. And, you know, do you guys remember what an idol is? An idol is anything that you love more than your obedience to God. Anything that you love more than your obedience to God. For some people, that's ministry. That you can love ministry more than you love obeying God. If God tells you to do something, but you feel like it's going to disrupt your ministry, you've now made ministry an idol. It can mean social media. He says, I want you to read these six books of the Bible and you get on social media first, you have now made that an idol because it's anything that you love more than your obedience to God. So that doesn't, what that means is, I think it's powerful is that something that God was made good, you can make evil and into idolatry when you place it above God. A promise that God made you can turn into an idol. We've done all the fasting and all the praying and we're not finished. But my question to you is, what happens when you're anointed, you feel ready, but you're not at the appointment yet? So today's message is called Anointed Before the Appointment. You all can be seated. Today's going to be a day of a lot of words, a lot of look up. So I hope you have paper, pen, notebook. But I want to start off with what is the anointing? I think we teach a lot about it, but I wanted to know what is the anointing? And the first thing I want you to know is that it's a power given by the Holy Ghost to function in the supernatural. The anointing is the power given by the Holy Ghost to function in the supernatural. The anointing is a mark or a seal of God. It's God's branding. How many of you know that you can preach and not be anointed to preach? How many of you know that you can sing, but you're not anointed to sing? So the anointing is the mark and seal of God. It's his branding. And, be, and the reason why I believe God wanted us to break this down is because you all have seen gifted people that you call anointed because they can sing well. But the, that, the word gift and the word anointing are two totally different words. They look similar, but they're completely different, which means you can be gifted with no anointing. 
So we need to stop using that error word. Oh, they're anointed, but you know, they're not right. If they're not right, they're not anointed. The anointing marks a man. The anointing makes your manhood catch up with your mantle. Thank you, girl. Your character, your integrity, your honesty, your morality. If these things aren't present, this person isn't operating in the anointing. It prepares and it empowers you for a specific service. Right? So no matter who you are in the body of Christ, you should have the anointing. However, there are certain people that have different anointings than others. So for instance, there's a guy in... Um, I think it's in 2 Chronicles 22, 7. There was a man that was anointed for war. So everybody that does not have an anointing to take down systems and to destroy certain things, everybody doesn't have that anointing, but God will anoint certain people for certain things. That's why it's very important that you don't look at somebody's mantle and say, I can do that too, if you're not anointed for that warfare. One thing I love about the anointing is that as I was studying it, I realized that when you're married as a wife, you need to be anointed to be a wife. As a husband, you need to be anointed to be a husband. When I look at ministry as a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, you all who should be evangelizing, you should be anointed to do this. You have to have the anointing of God to do this work. As a parent, you should be asking God for the anointing to parent your child. Because Mary was anointed to carry Jesus. Hannah was anointed. Elizabeth was anointed. These women knew that they just weren't carrying babies, they were carrying destiny. And you have to be anointed to carry destiny. You say you want to host revival in your nation, in your city. You have to be anointed by God to host revival. You want breakthrough. You want healing. You want prevention and protection. You want to go to war. You better have the anointing. It's the anointing of God that makes the difference. Go with me to Zechariah 4, 6. You know, one of my favorite analogies of the anointing is sheep. And many of you already know this, but... Back in the day when a shepherd was, and they might, maybe they still do this, I don't know, but back in the day when they had sheep, they would pour olive oil on the head of the sheep because the ants and the bugs would get in their ears and their eyes and it would irritate them and almost drive them crazy. So when they put the anointing on, the insects slid off. And that's synonymous to what the anointing does for us. That God anoints you to be a certain person's spouse that what would aggravate somebody else, you have the grace and it just slides off of you. That God has anointed you to be that person's parent so everybody else said, couldn't be me, but God has graced you and anointed you for that assignment and everything just slides off of you. So you never listen to the mockers that say, couldn't be me. I wish it was me. You better than me because they're trying to play you. But what you need to say is, no, I'm anointed for this. And what God saw was that I had the capacity for this person because I understand who they are in the realm of the spirit. And God has packed me with the power for their destiny. The Bible says, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The reason I wanted to start with this scripture for the anointing, even though it doesn't have any of the words anointing in here, is because I want you to see what God is saying. He said, and you may want to read Zechariah 4 on your own, but what he's saying is the work that I gave you to do, you're not going to be able to do it with group support, which is what might is. And you're not going to do it with power, which is your individual strength, your money, your... Uh, fame, your resources. He said, but this thing that I want you to do is going to be done by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts is Jehovah Sabaoth, God of the angel armies. So I think he wanted you to know that I got backup. 
I don't need backup, but I got it for you. Because what you're going to need is a supernatural support. So to accomplish the work of God that he's given you to accomplish, you need the supernatural support that only the anointing can produce. Now, why is God doing this? Why doesn't he want somebody else to help out and do what he wants you to do? I think it's because men are by nature glory takers. We steal the glory of God, and he wants you to know that the work that he's doing, it could have only been God that did this. And so while everybody is looking for diamonds and, and jewels and gems, I think that the hottest commodity that everybody should be after right now is the commodity called the Holy Ghost. It's the oil. It is a precious oil that not everybody has access to, even though they should, because they haven't come into a full revelation of it. But once they do, it is that thing that even during a famine, even during a recession, it doesn't apply to you. It slides off because you're endowed with power for the service during that period of time. It was the anointing, or in other words, the Holy Ghost. So when he says, by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, that's the anointing. It was the anointing that brooded over the waters in Genesis 1-2. It was the Spirit of God that brooded over the waters in Genesis 1-2. It was the anointing that anointed an angel, because I don't know if you know that angels can be anointed too. I wrote that down somewhere. Oh, it's in Ezekiel 28-14 if you want scriptural proof. Ezekiel 28-14. But it was an angel of the Lord that opened and closed the Red Sea. That angel was anointed to do that. It was the anointing of the, the Lord that made the dry bones live again. So we should always have a continual supply of the anointing at all times. And you may say, Tiffany, does it run dry? Yes, it does. Matthew 25 is our example of that. That if you don't keep the oil burning, it dries out. So I wanted to give an analogy. I didn't make this up, but it's so good. Because why did God use oil? There's so many other resources he could have used for this anointing, but why did he use oil specifically? And number one, oil lubricates. So there's very little friction for your assignment when you have been lubricated by the Spirit of God, which means that this hole that nobody else can fit through because I'm, I'm, I'm slicked down with the anointing, I can glide through this easily because I was anointed for this. So the anointing lubricates you for assignments that would be hard for other people. The anointing also heals. So back in that day, oil, olive oil was used for medicinal purposes. So when the spirit of God is present or the anointing is present, it brings healing and comfort to your situation. The oil lights up, right? So when it's being burned in a lamp where the spirit of God is, there is light. Why is that important? Because when we fast, according to Isaiah 58, your light springs forth. What does it say about light? Your light springs forth speedily. When you look up the definition of the word light, it means or, O-R-E, and it means to illuminate your path. It also means to illuminate prosperity, illuminate the light of instruction, which means that you fasted because you needed an answer and because it looked dark and you couldn't hear anything else anymore. But after you turned on your plate and after you fasted, he said, the light is going to spring forth speedily. Or in other words, the light of my instruction, you're not going to see the way to go. The anointing does that. The oil also warms. So when you use it as fuel, as a flame, where the spirit of God is, there's warmth. It also inv invigorates. I can't ever say that word right. Invigorates. It's like when you're being massaged, right? It refreshes you. It revives you. It excites you. It encourages you. It rejuvenates you. And a lot of you feel spiritually dead. A lot of you sp feel spiritually achy. Ask the anointing. Ask God for the anointing that refreshes. The oil also adorns. So the anointing will act as a perfume and draw the people to you that need to be drawn. You're more pleasant to be around. That's why people are drawn to anointed people. The oil polishes. If you have any smooth, ed rough edges, it smooths those rough edges. And what I love at the very bottom of, I think it's the last verse of Zechariah 4, he's talking about these two people, but he calls them the anointed ones. And I looked up the word anointed, and of course it means fresh oil, or shining pure oil, or oil that produces light. 
But the word ones means sons or member of a group or of a nation, which means that these people are known as the sons of oil. Basically, they're the lit ones. Not that we needed any other lingo, but we are, we are the lit ones. What is the anointing? Go with me to Isaiah 10, 27. The anointing is a weapon. The Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulders and his yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When you look up the word burden, it means a load. It's going to be removed from off of your shoulders. How many of you deal with natural back aches, stress in your neck area? That is a demonic burden. It's not of God. And the Bible says it's going to be destroyed not because you heard a powerful message on YouTube. It's not going to be destroyed because you shouted real good and you spoke in tongues real powerfully. It's not going to be destroyed because you read a devotional. He said this thing gets destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the presence and power of God is the only way that this specific burden gets destroyed off of your life. What I love about this is the revelation, the word anointing here, the word is pronounced shemen, but it's spelled semen. And so the revelation I have is children. That he says, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off of your shoulders and off of your yoke, off of your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed ones or the children you're going to birth in. It has everything to do with all this abortion talk. Because the children are the lit ones. Because of the anointed one who is Jesus Christ, who has empowered us, the anointed ones, God has sent people with the anointing to break these specific yoke. And I think what's important as we begin to see, because I believe that the reason God is teaching this message is because he's bringing a double portion of his anointing on us. It's always important to remember that no matter how powerful a man or woman of God looks, it is only God that gets the glory. I don't care how accurate somebody sounds. I don't care if you see an eye pop back in their socket. It does not matter. You don't worship these people. Only God gets the glory. He is the anointed one. He is the lit one. We're just tiny flames in the midst of the big flame. Amen. Go with me to 1 John 2. Twenty-six through twenty-seven. The anointing is a supernatural power that lives on the inside of us. He says, "These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing which ye have received of Him abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie." And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. So what was he talking about with the word seduce? These things have I written concerning them that seduce you. One thing you should know about this is that we're in a day and age of doctrines of devils, doctrines of men. You hear one, one sentence of a verse, you take it, and then you don't read the rest of what that verse says. And he says that I, I don't want you to be seduced. And the only way to ensure that you won't be seduced in, a year, in, the, in the age of the Antichrist running around is that you have the anointing dwelling on the inside of you. Because what does the anointing does? It prevents you from being seduced. What is the word seduction? It means to lead you astray from the truth. It means to lead you into error and into sin. You've been seduced by a strange woman. You've been seduced by a strange man. You've been seduced by your spiritual apathy and laziness. You've been seduced by your inability to endure in prayer. You've been seduced by your complaining. You see how easy it is to be seduced? It means to be deceived, and it also means to roam from safety. So number one, 
you have to know that the anointing abides on the inside of you. Number two, the Bible says you don't need a man to teach you. Now, I needed to bring correction to this because y'all going to be like, okay, good, because that's why I teach myself. But we also just know that John is the one who taught us that. Amen? And that he put teachers in place. So please, when you study that, study that within context. Amen? The third thing, is, it, the anointing teaches you of all things that are true and cannot lie. And the last thing that you should know if you have the anointing is that you will abide in him. So the anointing actually draws you to God, not away from him. Anytime you say something stupid like, you the reason why people don't go to church, I know that you're not anointed. Because you wouldn't even say that because the Bible says that the church is the only thing that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. I don't care how mad you are at a person, the Bible says the only thing that the gates of hell God's church be careful what y'all be saying out here so we know that the Holy Ghost I mean the anointing or in other words the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of us and we have proof of that because we're not seduced we have proof of that because we're being drawn to God and not away from God we have proof of that because anytime somebody says something on social media that you disagree with it doesn't move you we have proof of that because you don't say stupid stuff like, that's why I don't even do Christianity. You're not anointed. Because there should never be a person on this earth or in hell that moves you from what you know about God. And anytime you're moved, I know that you have no anointing and you're in error. You have now roamed from the boundary of God's safety. Go with me to Acts 10.38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all of those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. When I looked up the word doing good, it means philanthrop philanthropic work, philanthropy. When I looked up the word healing, it means to cure or to free from error and sin. When I looked up the word oppressed, it meant to exercise harsh control over or to exercise dominion against. Listen to me, men. If you really knew who you were, you would not demonically oppress these women. If you really knew the power and the authority that you have, you would not need to demonically oppress these women. You would not need to be harsh to them. Women submit and obey men that they know submit and obey to God. You don't have to show your heavy hand of power to make a woman submit. That's called oppression. And you never want to be in the way of God because now you're oppressing somebody God gifted you. healing all that were oppressed of the devil you know we tend to know what devil is but for some reason I felt like looking it up in this scripture and it meant literally the word devil meant slanderous it means accusing falsely it means an accuser or traducer meaning accuser but what I thought was powerful about that is that he literally is the accuser of the brethren. Anybody that falsely accuses you is working for hell. You never have to wonder what's going on. You never have to wonder, why are you turning on me? Why, you know me better than this. Why are you accusing me of being something that I'm not? You know that the devil is in your midst. Even if it's in somebody that you think is saved. Because everybody that's saved doesn't mean that they're safe. If you are being slandered, if you are being falsely accused, even if you can't hear it, but you know in the realm of the spirit, you feel like the devil is at work. But God says how he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, we have the Holy Ghost, and with power, he gave us power also, who went about doing good, he said the works that Jesus did, so shall we do an even greater works, and healing all there were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. 
I looked up the word anointed here and it means consecrating Jesus to his office or furnishing him with the necessary power for his administration. It means to consecrate in an office or endowing a Christian with the gift of the Holy Ghost. That means that God will set you apart. How many of you know that that's what consecration means? It means that God has consecrated you or in other words, set you apart for the specific task, for the specific assignment, for the specific appointment that you have to do on this earth. So please stop asking God why everybody is falling away like flies. That's by design. Stop asking God, where did everybody go? That's by design. God said, I'm trying to make it easy for you because they were going to oppress you. And where, where you really need to be, I wanted you to do it without oppression. But if you want to take the hard way like the children of Israel, cool. Sometimes we need to relearn how to, make th how to let things be easy. That we always think that knowing God has to come with pain. No, he, he gave his only begotten son. We don't have to do that. Go with me to James 5, 14 through 15. Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven of him. I looked up the word sick. And it means to be diseased, but it also means to be impotent. It also means to be weak in means, or in other words, poverty. It means to be powerless. I looked up the word shall save. If, if is any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. You don't have to be physically sick. You could be financially sick. You can be mentally sick. You can be relationally sick. You understand what I'm saying? Let them call for the let them pray, let them anoint them with oil, and the prayer of the faith shall save them. I looked up the word save, and it means rescue from danger and destruction. It means to save a suffering room from perishing. It means to restore to health. It means to preserve you in danger, and it means to protect you. It says, and the Lord shall raise him up. It means to be awakened, to recall the dead to life again, to stir up, to cause to appear from inactivity and your sins will be forgiven. When you sin, it means that you've missed the mark. When you sin, it means that you're in error or that you're mistaken or you wandered from the path of the upright. You did wrong, you violated a, a law of God, but when it says you shall be forgiven, it means literally the definition of shall be forgiven means never to be discussed again. It was expired, kept no longer to leave one not taking him as a companion because some of y'all leave your sin and you, you hold hands with it and you ask God to forgive you for the abortion you ask God to forgive you for having sex you ask God to forgive you for gossiping you ask God to forgive you for falsely accusing somebody who was good to you and you still are holding it like a companion the definition of shall be forgiven literally means to leave one not taking him as a companion it means to abandon it that if God forgot about it, why do you remember it? Because in that case, you're in danger of another sin, which is being God. What you're saying is, I'm going to play God, so now I'm going to punish myself, and I'm going to remember the sin because, God, you don't punish me good enough, so I'm just going to be God in my life. Now you're in high treason. It's much easier to just let it go. Go with me to Revelations 3.18. Revelations 3.18, he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried by in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of my nakedness does not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see it. Now, what I thought was very powerful was that Lacedonia was known for their powerful eye salve in the natural. They made a lot of money selling this eye salve. But what God was letting them know was that you can't see. So even though in the natural, it looks like you're prospering in one area, he says, I'm going to anoint your eyes with eye salve 
so that you can see, even though you are rich from this natural eye salve you've been, you've been selling. The Greek definition of the word eye, the metaphorical definition is the eyes of the mind and the faculty of knowing. And it also means envy from a jealous side eye glance. I know y'all quiet, but y'all really got to get rid of that jealous spirit. Anoint your eyes with eye salve so that we can see. That means that jealousy will blind you. It means that envy will blind you. It means that you can no longer see the things of God if you are spiritually blinded by those things. No one should trust you until you get this taken care of. That thou mayest see, it means to discern. So that means your discernment is compromised. It means to perceive by your eyes, but also by your senses and what you feel. That's why whenever you go around some places, you're like, something not right. I feel it right here. That means you can perceive things by your senses or what you feel, but that dies when you can't see. It means the power of your understanding and your ability to take heed to something that's important. That's why um, I'd be trying to pronounce Ephatha, but I can't do it, so I'm going to just stick with what I know. Epitha. And you go down to Mark 7:34, and we know about this story because there was this man, it starts at verse 32. He was deaf, deaf, D-E-A-F, and he had an impediment in his speech. And they beseeched him, uh, they asked Jesus, put your hands on him. And God and Jesus put his finger in his ear, spit, touched his tongue, looked up to the heaven and the skies, and he said unto him, Epitha, be open. Epitha, be open. Epitha, be open. This should be a daily declaration for you because when you can no longer hear the voice of God, your speech is compromised. Whenever somebody is deaf in the natural, they sound different. Epitha is an anointing to open what the enemy shut. Epitha is a supernatural power endowed by God to open what has been shut. Epitha. It means to be open. Amen. Go with me to Isaiah 61. Are y'all learning something? I used to hate when people said that. Y'all learning something tonight? The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, but the spirit of the Lord God isn't upon you for all different reasons. He said, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Epitha. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to number one, preach good tidings to the meek. Are you preaching good tidings to the meek? What is good tidings? You're announcing the good news of Jesus Christ. Tiffany, I don't feel qualified. I don't know a lot about, about the Bible. Testify. Testify. Tell them how good God was to you this month, this week. That is bringing good news to somebody who is meek, or in other words, afflicted, needy, poor, or depressed. Your testimony is the good news of Jesus Christ. Number two, he sent you to bind up the brokenhearted. When I looked up the word bind, it literally means healer or compress. When you're brokenhearted, it means that thing is broken into pieces. I don't know about y'all, but I've had a broken heart. That thing hurt. You just want to go to the doctor and be like, hey, can you bandage it up somehow? The word brokenhearted means crushed and destroyed and to be crippled. Do you know that your heart can be so broken that you're walking around right now crippled in the realm of the spirit? You're literally heart sick. And what is heart? Your understanding. Heart is your mind and your memory. Heart means your understanding and your emotions. And some of you right now, you look beautiful, you're doing well in life, but you're crippled in your understanding, you're crippled in your emotions, you're crippled in your mind and your memory. That's why you treat people like that. 
because you are brokenhearted. But God says he sent to anoint, to bind up, or in other words, heal or compress up the brokenhearted. The spirit of the Lord has come upon me and the Lord has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captives. The word liberty means freedom, but it also means to spontaneously outflow. Isn't that good, Sam? The last thing is it opens up the prisons to them that are bound. Opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Do you know the definition of opening of the prisons means opening of eyes? Y'all, when you look up these words, there is something God is trying to say to us that will free you in one night what your bloodline had for 40 years that were holding a bondage. That when you read this, we don't have a revelation that he says, in the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, we're thinking that they're prisons. And God is saying, no, baby, I need you to open up your eyes because the, the, the spiritual blindness has you bound, or in other words, imprisoned. When you look up the rest of it, he says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? Because we're proclaiming that the rest of this year is the acceptable year of the Lord. That means God's favor, God's delight, God's blessings, God's happiness. This is the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. You don't have to avenge yourself. God is going to do it. Stand still. God will avenge you speedily. He says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes. The, this is what the anointing does, y'all. It's the oil of joy for mourning. It's the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. This is the fire and the hammer that breaks that stronghold in pieces. You wake up feeling heavy. God says, I gave you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That means as soon as your feet touch that, touch the floor, you go into a high praise. Heaviness by law has to leave. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord that he might be glorified. And we know verse four, it sounds familiar because we know this from Isaiah 58. They shall build the old waste. They shall rise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. Go with me to Isaiah 58, all the way at the bottom. Verse 12, they shall build up the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. They shall be called the repairer of the breach and restorer of the paths to dwell in. Are you seeing a pattern here? Luke 4, 18 says the same thing, so I won't reread it, but it says recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. There are a lot of different scriptures on the anointing. I wanted to just give you a few of them, but I do want you to go into your own study of the anointing and the anointed for the rest of the month of July, okay? Because in order to really operate or walk in something fully, you have to know what it is. The Bible says that my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. He didn't say my people were hurt or bruised or sick or set back. He said complete destruction because you don't know what these things are. And if you truly had a revelation of the anointing of God, there is nothing that we couldn't do. So I want you to know that you're anointed and I want you to know that as long as you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life and you've received the Holy Ghost as your Lord and Savior, well, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you've given him rule, reign, and dominion over everything that pertains to you, your decisions, your life, your children, your emotions, your conversations, your body, your friendship, your relationship. That means that the anointing dwells on the inside of you. And how many of you know that because we're a part of a body, all of us have roles to play? I mentioned this one time when I was younger, I broke my baby toe. Like we don't think our baby toe has any function. Baby, I was on crutches. I was leaning without my crutches. Your baby toe really keeps you balanced. And so even if you feel insignificant or you feel like your part in the body isn't strong, even if you're the baby toe, somebody like me leans to the side when you're not in place. 
that even if you feel like the only people that make a difference are the people with the mic in the hand and the people that speak and the people you see in the forefront, no, I can only do this when the body is in place. If the bo because the Bible says somewhere, it's in the message version, if you're not in place, you have a one-eyed monster. If the body is not in place, I could not be doing what I'm doing today. So all of us need to be operating in our anointing. Amen? So here are a few people that were anointed before they were appointed. We have Abram, who was 99 years old when God named Abraham. He changed his name to Abraham and said, I'm going to make you father to many nations. And this man was too old to produce never seen children and how are you going to make me father to many nations and I can't have one God had anointed him before he put him in the appointment Jesus was anointed before he was appointed that's why we didn't see him till he was 30 Jesus could have started ministry at 12 years old he was the son of God but God says, I need to consecrate you and I need to set you back a little bit because I need you to bake in this anointing. I need the anointing to saturate you. I need this anointing to fully produce in you what I needed to produce because when you go out there, it's going to be full stream ahead. Jesus was anointed before he was appointed. We have prophet Elisha who asked prophet Elijah for a double portion of his anointing. And prophet Elijah says, if you are where I am, Sometime later, you can get it. So Elisha's anointing came from being obedient to an instruction and being patient. He was anointed before he was appointed. We have Hannah, who was mocked. We have Hannah who cried sorely, wept bitterly before God. Her soul was grieved because she wanted a baby and the other woman mocked her and the Lord and she made a vow to God that when you give me a baby I'll give them back to you and God says you have what I ask you for she went home and knew her husband they conceived a baby that was a woman who was anointed before the appointment we have Mary who got pregnant when she had no man so she was embarrassed she was mocked, she was slandered, she was talked about. Just because you're anointed doesn't mean you don't go through persecution. You're just anointed to handle the persecution. Mary had the wonderful assignment of birthing our Savior into this world, which means that she was anointed as an intercessor. She was anointed to protect that thing even when she was faced with being talked about. How many of you cower down at being talked about? I see some of y'all put up posting and delete it because you're like, I don't want to have no problems. Baby, you're not anointed for this. Mary was anointed before she was appointed. We have Elizabeth who was old and barren. Elizabeth was anointed to carry John in her womb and the angel of the Lord gave her the destiny of her child to let her know that you're anointed to, to birth destiny before destiny comes. You're anointed before you come to your appointment. We have Joseph who was betrayed. You have Joseph who was lied on. You have Joseph who was thrown in jail. You have Joseph who was forgotten about once he got to jail but he was anointed for it. You know what the anointing did to Joseph? It gave him integrity. Because he could have slept with Potiphar's wife. He could have told on certain people, but it gave him the anointing endowed him with moral excellence of his soul, moral power and excellence of soul. The anointing forbid him for, for messing up the testimony of Jesus Christ. We have David, who was anointed by the prophet to be king, but has to still go back to the field. And what I love about the story is that his talent gets him to the palace, but it's his anointing that keeps him there. It was his talent because King Saul had an evil spirit that was tormenting him. 
And it was the anointing, or in other words, the music, the worship that David played that made, drove the evil spirits away. So his talent got him there, but his anointing allowed him to stay. Some of you are talented, but you're not anointed. That's why you have these opportunities and they completely, they shut the door on you and you're like, why? Because it's the anointing that makes the difference. What makes the difference between you and somebody else that's more powerful than you in playing music or business or anything? It's the anointing that makes the difference. You don't have to be the best, you have to be the most anointed. Gifted does not mean anointed. But what do you do when you're anointed to father many nations, but you're too old to produce? What do you do when you're a mother of destiny, but you're barren? Your womb literally is a desolate desert. What do you do when you're called to be king, but you're still tending sheep? Can you imagine knowing that you're a king, but you're still out in here in the field and you're not in your royal garbs? God, I'm anointed. Why am I still here? What do you do when you're anointed to be a wife, but you don't have a husband in sight? What do you do when you're anointed to be a husband and everybody keeps telling you no? What do you do when you're anointed to be the provider as a man, but you have no money? What do you do when you're anointed to deliver your bloodline, but you're not qualified or you don't feel qualified enough? You feel like you're too young for the assignment. What do you do when the oil that produces fire has been lit, but you feel like you're late for your assignment? What do you do when the, when the oil God gave you has been lit, but you feel like you're late? Herein is the frustration, I don't know why I said herein. Herein is the frustration of following God. Go with me to Matthew 14, 29 through 30. Most of us know this story. It was in the fourth watch of the night. Excuse me. Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer. It is I be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come unto the water. And he said, come. And when Peter came down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But, everybody say but. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? Why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt me? When you're anointed before you're appointed, you begin to doubt God if you're not careful. And one of the frustrations is of following God is not being high enough. This is why, again, we walk by faith and not by sight. When he saw the wind, the word wind means violent agitation. What in your life right now is violently agitating you? That's the wind. What in your life right now is a violent agitation? It could be a person, it could be a situation, it might for you not be nothing. But what for you, when you think about that thing, it causes a violent agitation in your spirit. When he saw the wind boisterous, I looked up the word boisterous, it means strong man. So this violent agitation, if you're not careful, slowly becomes a strong man and you become afraid and you begin to seek. It's funny how when you're on the boat, not next to Jesus, you're safe. But the second you begin to follow Jesus, because the truth is if you don't keep your eye on him and the second you look down, the second you get the phone call, that means you look down. The second you feel that thing on your body, that's you looking down. The second they talked about you and you get mad about it, you look down. The second they caused the offense and you didn't forgive them, that's you looking down. The second somebody says something to you that make you doubt what God said, that means you're looking down. Immediately you begin to sink. And the goal 
Because you're safe on the boat, but how many of you know you don't get to your destination up there? You get to your destination following Jesus. God bid me to come. If it's you, I'll come. If it's you, I'll walk on this water. If it's you, I'll learn faith in this situation. If it's you, God, I'll learn... God, I believe, help my unbelief. I will keep my eye on you. And as you walk out on that boat and you keep your eye on the cross, you keep all your eye on Jesus Christ, nothing can sink you. When you see the word sink, it means to drown, but it also means to lack confidence. And it also means that you trusted God too little. Jesus said, O oh, thou of little faith, why did you doubt me? And I looked up the word doubt. It means mentally wavering in opinions. And what does that remind you of? James 1.8, a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of their ways. He says, why did you, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And I need you to put yourself in the story to see where you have doubted, where you're sinking. Where are you sinking? Today's message is to put you back on top of the water, water walker. Why are you mentally waving in your opinion between who to trust? Because whenever you're looking at the water, you're saying, do I trust this situation or do I trust God? Do I trust the situation or do I trust God? God, do I trust you or do I trust the situation? Do I trust the situation or do I trust you? I heard what you said, God, but I don't know if you spoke to me because I'm spiritually deaf and I can't really hear you anymore. So did you say it or did you, should I trust you or should I trust God? That's what you do all day long. When you don't, when you're not decided. A double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of your ways. Double-minded means you're uncertain. Double-minded means you're doubting. Double-minded means you're divided in interest. Double-minded means you're two-spirited. Double-minded means you're vis vacillating in opinions and a purpose. Unstable means restless. It means instability in your mind. And when you're unstable in all of your ways, it means all of your ways of thinking, all of your ways of feeling, everything that you decide. It means that once you're unstable on this is God or you, you're unstable in all of your ways. Does this make sense for some of your personal lives? Why, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So I want you to know that God wants us to, pa to practice patience in the process. That God has anointed you for a certain appointment and he hasn't forgotten about you, but he wants you to practice patience in the process. I mentioned how I wanted, my hair is not gonna be this color for long, it's gonna be like ash blonde. And if I hadn't known I had to go through my summer with brown hair, I would've just kept it black. Thank you girl, I hate blonde, I hate brown hair on me. And I remember telling my stylist, I was like, just go ahead and dye it blonde. And she said, not in my chair, you won't. I find you a different stylist. And I said, why? And she said, because she said, first of all, you need to practice patience. Now, I didn't know this person. So I knew this was God at this point. She said, first of all, you need to practice patience. She said, because in order to maintain the integrity of your hair, you have to go through the process. Baby, you know I'm like all right, Lord. In order to maintain the integrity of your situation, there is a process that you have to take lest all of your hair fall off, lest the relationship break, lest the communication stop, lest your situation completely demolished because you were impatient in that situation. He's saying practice patience so that you can maintain the integrity of what I want to give you. Because the blessings of the Lord maketh rich, and they add no sorrow. And right now there's sorrow if I give you this gift right now. So I need this blessing. I need to do a perfect work in this. So I need you to practice patience. And I remember anytime somebody tells me, Tiffany, practice patience, I always got a bad, I was so mad. 
Because I'm like, y'all, stop saying that to me. Like, I used, I would get an attitude when somebody said practice patience. Because I'm like, what are y'all saying? Y'all know how much time I put in this? And one of my friends said, have you ever Googled the definition of the word patience? And of all things I've never Googled was a definition of the word patience because I felt like I knew what it was. It's time. And I've been there in time. But the definition of the word patience is the capacity, which means that we need to be asking God to enlarge our capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset without complaining or irritation. It was in that moment that the heavy hand of God slammed down the gavel and told me I was guilty of being impatient. <laughs> that I had never in my life practiced the patience of God. That I had never in my life was not angry, frustrated, irritated on something I had to wait for. That's when I learned that patience wasn't time, patience is a posture. That's when I learned that something that would take somebody 10 years to learn because they're not perfecting their patience work will take you one week after your posture changes. And you said, you know what? I, I, I take rule, reign, and dominion over my mouth and over my emotions. I command them to be submitted to you, God. I will not complain over this situation. I will not be moved. I will not be bothered. I keep my eye on your promise. I am not too spirited. I am not double-minded. I am not uncertain about what you said. You are my father. If you said it, that's just what it is. Then I looked up the word complaining. Like, while I'm on the roll, let me go through all the words. Y'all, complaining means, there was one definition, but I'm going to give you the second definition. It's an illness or a medical condition. The word complaining, you can Google it right now, means an illness or a medical condition. Some of the synonyms are dis order, dis-ease, sickness. Could it be that the cure of this disease is you being patient to the great physician? Could, I'm going to say that one more time. Could it be that the cure for the disease of complaining is you being a patient to the great physician. That wasn't all the revelation I got. Because I've always been fascinated on how the children of Israel did not make it into the promised land because of murmuring and complaining. Murmuring is when you do it behind somebody's back in secret, you whispering. Smile in your face all the time. You're trying to take my place. Y'all backstabbers. Backstabbers. Y'all ain't low. I might not see you, but God do. You'll never make it into your promised land playing around with me. You won't murmur behind my back. The children of Israel could not get into the promised land because of their complaining and their murmuring. Could it be that God did not want to infect the promised land with the illness of complaining like Adam and Eve had infected the Garden of Eden. Could it be that some of you will never see your promised land until you are healed of the illness of complaining? Could it be that what God has for you is so powerful, so potent, so much of a blessing to your bloodline, to this generation, that God says, if I give it to them, the spirit of complaining is going to spread like a cancer and it's going to be ruined and they won't be able to walk into what I'm giving to the next generation because now the whole promised land is sick. The children of Israel never made it into the promised land because of murmuring and because of complaining. There are promises that you will never enter into until you get that under control. There are people I had in my life, I don't care if you're family or not, when you get to complaining with me, I'll, I, it's almost like I'll never talk to you again. Like I don't, I take, when God gives me a revelation on something, I take that stuff so seriously, it's like my body gets vexed. 
being around somebody that always finds a complaint in something. It's like, well, aren't you happy that your legs work today? Like you woke up and your legs, you happy about anything today? But it's an illness. It, it makes you not even want to be around the person because all you do is complain. And if two, how can two walk together except they agree? Why are you always around somebody that's complaining? Because that means both of y'all ain't going to be able to get into the, because you get infected by their illness. So what do I do? I'm anointed before the appointment. You promised me something, God. I'm, I'm endowed with the power of God. I have all of this power, but I'm not at the place of my promise yet. What do I do? Matthew 25 teaches us that our appointment may be delayed, but we still have to stay oiled up. And I want you to study that when you get a chance. Because the Bible says that the wise versions stayed oiled up and the foolish versions went to sleep on their assignment. All of them actually went to sleep, but one was prepared when the bridegroom came because he was delayed. That means that in the days that we live in, you have to keep the oil fresh. You have to keep the oil flowing. The oil should be in a continual flowing manner in your life at all times. You keep the oil flowing in the presence of God with worship. You keep the oil flowing with praise and prayer. You keep the oil flowing in your continual intimacy and, and communion with God. Proverbs 11.9 says, what does it say? Y'all don't be knowing either. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Amen. Through knowledge through the, shall the just be delivered, which means that through your ignorance do you stay bound. Go with me to James 1.9. Oh, wait, that's not it. Where is it? James. Where is it that says, let patience have her perfect work? Oh, one and four. Thank you. Bible says, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience have her perfect work. The word perfect work means character needs to grow up. Which goes back to what I said at the beginning, that your manhood needs to catch up to your mantle. Y'all need to grow up, men. And women, y'all need to grow up too. When you let patience do her perfect work, it means that God is perfecting or God is growing the character of somebody. God is growing the manhood of somebody. God is growing the womanhood of somebody. God is growing something in your situation that's going to make this a blessing and not add sorrow to it. Let patience do her perfect work. I want all of us to stand up. I want us to pray. The first prayer I want to pray is if we've grieved the Holy Ghost in any way. Because anybody that has any spiritual apathy or you just don't hear God like you used to hear God or your relationship with God isn't where it should be, somewhere along the line, the Holy Spirit has been grieved and he will leave. I know we have that doctrine that he stays. No, you grieve the Holy Ghost. He's out of there. You're not going to disrespect him. I just don't want us to miss what God is doing in this hour. And I believe that he's giving us the tools and the strategies straight from heaven to be able to get breakthrough in such a speed that people can only say this could have only been God. It could only have been God that this happened this way. And they might not know the work you put in behind the scenes and one day you'll testify, but they will only be able to say only the hand of God could have done this. So let's just open up our mouths and just repent for grieving the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, we thank you for your greatest gift that you could have given us, the gift of the Holy Ghost. We thank you that he's our comforter. He's a spirit of truth. We thank you, precious Holy Ghost, for comforting us. We thank you for being our 24-7 intercessor. We thank you for being our counsel of defense. We thank you that when you're in the court of heaven, you stand before the accuser 
and you read out our documents to proclaim us innocent, we thank you, Holy Ghost, for being our best friend. Thank you for sticking close to us when we've disregarded you. Thank you for not giving up on us when we picked up our phone and called somebody else when you just wanted us to talk to you. Oh, Father, we ask that you would forgive us. Father, we come to you today with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive us for grieving your Holy Spirit. We ask, God, that you would forgive us for grieving your Holy Spirit and how we treat other people. We ask that you forgive us for grieving your Holy Spirit, God, and praying in tongues and praying in our natural language, God, and still not doing right. We ask that you would forgive us, Holy Ghost. Come on, I don't know what you've done to grieve the Holy Ghost, but pray. Father, we ask that you would forgive us for grieving your Holy Spirit by not listening to the whispers of him telling us what to do. We ask that you would forgive us, God, that we listen to people in social media outside of you and now we can't even hear you anymore. Forgive us, God. We, we, we for, ask that you forgive us for quenching your spirit, Lord. That we've just stopped the move of God with our agendas, with our, with our plans, with our purposes, God. We have latched on too tight to everything we thought our life should be and we left no room to allow you to move. We've completely quenched the spirit of God out of our lives. God, forgive us. We have realized and recognized the error of our ways. We have realized that we have roamed from safety. We have realized, God, that we are now outside of the boundary of your protection and your covering. Oh Lord, we ask that you would forgive us now, Father. Forgive us for making your Holy Spirit sad. Forgive us for betraying the Holy Ghost. Forgive us for playing the Holy Ghost. Forgive us, God. We ask that you forgive us, Father. We ask that you forgive us, God, for preaching the gospel and going straight back into sin. We ask, God, that you would forgive us, God, for Bible thumping, Father, and not having our own lives checked. We ask, God, that you would forgive us for preaching at people and not examining our own hearts. We ask that you would forgive us, God, for coming to you with dirty hands and a dirty heart. Holy Ghost, we ask that you forgive us. We ask that you forgive us. We ask that you forgive us. We ask that you forgive us for every time you interceded for us, we turned around and we spoke against it because of doubt. Oh God, in any way that we've grieved you, forgive us, Lord. We need your precious Holy Ghost. We need you, precious Holy Spirit. We can't live this life without you. Your life to us is advantageous. We know, God, that we can't do anything without you. Father, no longer will we strive with you. Your word says, woe unto them that strive with me. Father, you're the potter and we're just mere clay. We let go of our agenda. We let go of our plans for our lives. We let go of how things should be, how we think things should be, and how we think things should go. And we say, Holy Ghost, have your way. We say, Holy Spirit, have your way. We say, Holy Ghost, have your way. We give you rule, we give you reign, and we give you dominion in our lives. We give you rule, we give you reign, we give you dominion in our marriages. We give you rule, we give you reign, we give you dominion over our families, over our plans, over our destiny. Holy Spirit, have your way. And I just want us to just be silent just for maybe 30 seconds. I want the Holy Spirit to whisper something to you. Father, I pray that you would open up the ears of your people. We've come before you in repentance. We ask that you forgive us, and by faith we receive your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Now, I pray that you would restore our relationship to you, God. Restore our intimacy to you, Father. Where we've ignored you because we wanted our own way, where we've ignored you because we thought our plans were better, where we've ignored you because the desires of our heart, the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, the pride of life took precedence over you, Father. We destroy that stuff now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, to have your way. I pray that you would just speak to just a soft whisper, Lord, or maybe a yell. I don't know what they need. Don't let me tell you what to do. I pray, God, that you would say something to them before they leave here. 
I pray that they will be good stewards over that revelation and write it down. Not assume that they can remember it, but they will write it down and study. But Father, I pray that tonight is the first night of our relationship back with you again. That we come back to you with a clean slate. That when you speak, we will do it. When you speak, we will hear you. When you jump, when you say jump, we'll say how high. Knowing that the spirit of truth is talking to us. Everybody just stay silent for about a few seconds and just listen. The next prayer point I want to pray is on blinded eyes. The next prayer point I want to play, pray is on blinded eyes. Nah, let's pray on impatience. Patience. I want us to repent for being impatient. You can give me some more. I want us to pray on being impatient. We need to repent for complaining, the sin of complaining. It opens up the door to illness and sickness. You didn't know that that was the portal that opened up the door to illness and sickness, but we're going to close that gate up. But let's open up our mouth right now and, and, and repent for complaining. Repent for coming against the promise. Father, we repent for doubting you. We repent, Father, in every area of our lives where you gave us a promise. We prayed and then we pulled it back out of the ground with our own mouth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent for every time that we did not go to you in prayer, but instead picked up our phone and complained to our friends who then probably hung up and complained to their friends about what we complained about. And it was just a bad cycle. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask God that you would forgive us for using our mouth as a weapon against us. We ask God that you would forgive us for using our mouth as a wilderness, but we declare God that our mouth or our speech will now blossom abundantly in the name of Jesus. It will produce its fruit, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We repent for murmuring, God. We repent for putting our mouth on any man or woman of God that is doing your will. We repent, Father, for murmuring behind their back to cause division in the body. We repent for it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, open up your mouth and repent. Complaining kept those people out of the promised land. This is a serious prayer. Because many of you are entering into your promised land this year. And had it not been for this prayer, you would have missed it. Come on. Father, we repent. We ask that you forgive us. In the name of Jesus, we now receive your forgiveness by faith. Father, we nullify every complaint with the blood of Jesus Christ. We command it now to fall dead to the ground and bear no fruit in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come out of agreement with every inner vow the complaint made. We break the inner vow, we break the agreement that we came into with complaining and murmuring. We divorce it, we separate ourselves from it right now in the name of Jesus and we replace it with what you said, which was it would come to pass that this thing would come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray right now that the character of Christ 
comes upon you so strongly that your manhood matches your mantle. This counts for you even if you're a woman. That your manhood will match your mantle. That your mantle is not going to be all the way up here, but your character is all the way down here. God can do a quick work in your character, a quick work in your life. Come on, open up your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we destroy every spirit of bad integrity. We destroy every spirit of bad character. We destroy, God, every spirit of not keeping our word. We destroy every spirit of being a liar, a liar having a lying tongue. Father, we declare that our manhood matches our mantle. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on. Every mouth should be moving. next prayer point I want to pray for the anointing I want you to ask God for fresh oil to fall upon you I want this prayer to be a violent prayer I feel like y'all are just a little too quiet I want a sound to rise up in this place I want a thunderous sound to rise up in this place open up your mouth and pray for the anointing right now in the name of Jesus endow each and every person under the sound of my voice to produce God for their assignment prepare them for their assignment in the name of Jesus I declare that they are anointed for this I declare that you are anointed for this I declare that you are anointed to be his husband I declare that you are anointed to be her wife I declare that you are anointed for those children you are anointed to be a millionaire. You are anointed to give away your money. You are anointed to preach and teach and prophesy. Pray. Come on. So many people ask to be my friend. Baby, are you anointed to be my friend? Come on, pray. Jesus, we thank you for the anointing for rich friendships. We thank you for the anointing for rich friendships. We thank you for the anointing for rich friendships. Enlarge our capacity for rich friendships. I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed to cover you. I'm anointed to be your friend. I'm anointed to love on you. I'm anointed to hold you. I'm anointed to believe in you. Pray. I'm anointed to have faith with you. Pray. Jekapanto le kapa, rikete sede de bakulo kapa, rikete shekande le kapa ya, ruko tele kapando zale baka. Are you anointed for this? Shekete le kapa yo, rikande le kapa. I'm anointed to finish this race. I'm anointed to get to the promised land. I want y'all to keep praying, but you're gonna to begin to declare what you're anointed for. Everybody's not anointed to be your friend. The people that are anointed to be your friend, listen to me. Y'all still pray. They have faith when you lost yours. They're anointed to be your friend. They stick with you in persecution because they're anointed to be your friend. They don't hide 
your friendship, they're anointed. They believe the vision God gave you because they have an oil on them that's anointed to walk with you. Everybody don't have that oil. There's an oil that gets you into the promised land. There's an anointing that slides you into the promised land. Come on, you better open up your mouth. You're anointed to be that man's wife. You're anointed to cover him. You're anointed to be his Ezar. You're anointed to be his watchman. You're anointed to believe in him. You're anointed to deal with his attitude. You're anointed to deal with his personality. You're anointed to deal with his call. You're anointed to deal with his demons. You're anointed to deal with it because you can break it. Come on, men. You're anointed to be that woman's wife. Everybody can't be her wife, but you can because you have the anointing. You're anointing. You're anointed to get her to submit to you. You're anointed to get her to lead you. You're anointed to wash her with the word. Come on, everybody's not anointed to be with her. Everybody's not anointed to be with this bride. You're anointed to carry this baby. Come on, y'all. I said a thunderous praise. There's a, there should be a sound. You're anointed to carry this baby. You're anointed to carry this destiny. You're anointed to burden the promise. You're anointed to raise them with kindness. You're anointed to treat them well. You're anointed to not abuse them. You're anointed to love on them. You have the grace to raise leaders. You have a king building machine in your womb. You're anointed for this. Come on, everybody's not anointed to be a millionaire. I know in the body of Christ, we demonize people with money. But I'm gonna let y'all in on a secret. There's plenty of poor people going to hell too. Which let me know that wealth and poverty is a heart posture. It's not about your money. And some of you in here are anointed to be millionaires. What does that look like? That looks like there is an oil on you that makes it easy. There's an oil on you that you don't toil for this. There's an oil on you that you make $200,000 in four days there's an anointing on you that you vacation for the rest of the year you have an oil on you that's an anointing you have an anointing to give that even when they betray you even when they call your good evil you said you won't mess up my blessing I'm gonna give again and I'm gonna give again, and I'm gonna give again, and I'm gonna give again, and I'm gonna reap a harvest in the same year. The Bible says in the message version, Isaac got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. That'll be your testimony, because you're anointed for this. You're anointed to give. Everybody doesn't have the anointing to give. Most people complain when they give. Their, their, their giving is now sick. You got to complain when you get to me. Keep it. I don't want your sick money. I don't want your sick giving. That's why he said to give with a cheerful heart. Why do you think he said that? You're anointed to be wealthy. He said... He gave Jesus Christ of Nazareth the Holy Ghost and power. Power is dunamis. We know that as a blind being able to see, the deaf being able to hear, the dead raising, but it also means the wealth and riches, the power and influence that belongs to riches and wealth. That means that you have an anointing to make this kind of money to do damage to the kingdom of hell, to build up the kingdom of God. This wealth is not solely for you, even though you can be a beneficiary of it. This wealth is for the kingdom of God. This is why it's a heart posture. 
So when God say, I need you to take 500,000 and give it over here, can you do it? You're anointed to be a millionaire. You're anointed. Your God doesn't even want you to toil or work hard for the money. Cause he said, I'm gonna use you over here, but I'm gonna make you rich over here. Cause I know your heart posture. I know you're not attached to it. I know your God is not mammon. I know that you have now bowed down. When you have an anointing for money, you know that wealth is a weapon. When you have an anointing for money, you know that your wealth is a weapon. Come on, let's pray. I'm not done. Because what I don't want us to do is lack endurance in prayer. I know you're getting a little tired, but I want you to know that tonight everything changes. I want you to know that even if it doesn't look like you change, if you've been with this ministry and praying and fasting, I can guarantee you, you look a little different than you did when you first got here. So I'm telling you now, this time in prayer is not time wasted. This is precious time spent with God and he hears us. Let's open up your mouth and declare that you are anointed for your assignment by God. I don't know what your assignment is. Open up your mouth and declare the anointing in the name of Jesus. If you're a prophet, you are anointed to be a prophet. You're anointed to open up your mouth and tear down systems. You're anointed to speak truth to power. You're anointed to not care about the, not fear the faces of men. You are anointed to fear God. You're anointed to wear the garment of praise. You're anointed that when you speak, the atmosphere shifts. You're anointed that when you land in a nation, everything changes. You're anointed for this. You're anointed to worship. You're anointed to worship. You have an anointing for worship. That when you open up your mouth, demons flee. You have an anointing for worship. That when you open up your mouth, the atmosphere is cut with the sword of the angel. You are anointed to worship. That when you speak, the sickness dies. It dries up like a fig tree. Your worship is so anointed that the angels of the Lord sends confusion to the enemy's camp. That when you get there, the only thing you can do is pick up the spoils, pick up the spoils, you pick up the spoils, you pick up the treasures, you pick up the treasures, you pick up the treasures because you're fasting and you're praying, your worship to God. The anointing did the business for you before you got there. He said, go ahead and do your thing. Just hold your peace. I'm going to fight for you. Exodus 14, 14, hold your peace, I'm going to fight for you. Hold your peace, I'm going to fight for you. Just love on me and worship. Just hum to me and worship. Just sing unto me a new song and worship. Watch me fight for you. This is the anointing. I'm going to make it easy. I know they try to put friction in your way, but the oil is going to make you slide through that door they closed on you. I know they put friction in your way, but the oil is going to make you glide through that door they slammed in your face. I know they tried to stop you, but the anointing makes the difference. Come on, I'm anointed for this. 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 Come on. I'm anointed for this. I'm anointed for this. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a little bit. As we pray in the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would intercede for everybody depending on their specific situation. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the fresh oil 
the anointing of the Holy Ghost that has come upon us. I thank you that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is made evident to us and to everybody around us that we are anointed for this. The Bible says, touch not mine, anointed, do my prophets no harm. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that this anointing is a shield of defense for us. So as you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is now interceding straight to God through you with groanings that cannot be uttered. I pray that a fresh baptism of fire fall down on the people of God right now in the name of Jesus. That anybody in here that cannot speak in tongues will leave here with their prayer language in the name of Jesus. Come on, give me tongues of fire. Spit them out. Lebako se rebeke pia, libanto leke pai, reke te 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 se leka pam pam pala kapaya, reke te 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 bandu rebe de leke pe, shatam de leka pam pala kapa, reke te 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 de leka dan de seria prakatoya, libanto leka pam de leke pe ya, reke te se ka te ke te, ruko bondo leka pam pari a pala kapaya, leka de seria te le de bandu rebe de 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 bandu, reka pa kapa, leka te, ye kapa, reka pa, ye se te, ye kapa. I want you to see in the realm of the spirit the bars of iron being cut asunder. She kapata la da bandu rebeke pea le kanta da kapara kapapa she te 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 se ke le kapara kapaya rike te le kapandu la da rabasu rebe kapaya. Shake up, pop, 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 rikete leke paya, libando la kapu, rikete, shaka, yaka, yeke, woko, yaka, yaka, yeke, woka, yapa, yeke, seke, leka, reke. Shika up, la kapanzo, rebe de leka dia. Shepa kaya, rupo tole de bazu rebe kepe. Liban de le de le bantu rete de le de le bato le kapapa rete yeshe kepaya rike de le ketiya robondo lo kaboya yepaya 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 oko reke yepe yeshe kadala da basu reke yepamba ba le kepe rike de le kape o papa rike de le kape yekapapa o kapa le bandi. Reke! Come on, declare Epitha. Declare it to be open. Every closed door, be open. Every gate, be open. Every portal, be open. Every opportunity, be open. Come on, declare Ephesus, be open. You have the anointing to open when the devil shut. Open the doors of your marriage. Open the doors of your breakthrough. Open the doors of your healing. Ephesus, be open. God has made a covenant with us of answer prayers. Pray. At this altar, we have a covenant of answer prayers. Pray. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open! Be open! Be open! da bazu rebe de le kapaya Le bante shede de de bra kape Zi banko le bante Rikete de de kape Shoto ribe kepe 
No ponte se le capaia, ripete la capa, se capa de orebe que vea, libando la capaia, si barro botó la capa, y a capa papa, requete la capea, y a pando se ca, y a capa la pa, ripete la de basurre pa capaia. There's a child in here with hernia. I don't even know what hernia is, but I saw it and I, I saw a child with hernia. Maybe it's online, it could be in person, but if it is, bring them up. Any child with hernia. If it's online, we declare your healing today. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ because I don't even know what hernia is. So whatever it is, God wants you to know that it's been dealt with. Lay hands on it as a parent right now. Take some oil, rub it on wherever the hernia is and declare it dead in Jesus' name. I have one of my followers, I don't remember her name. She's in the UK, but she's on her deathbed. I think they said that her brain was out for seven minutes, but she's like up, but like she's in critical condition. <clears throat> so we're just gonna pray her on up out of there. Cause I just refuse to believe that anybody that's a part of this, like not like this Lord, they can't die like this. Not if they're a part of this. Not if they've been fasting and praying, no. So let's lift up our voice. I don't remember her name, but the Holy Ghost does. So we're going to declare that she comes out of there, declare that her heart functions exactly how it's supposed to function, and that she walks out quicker than the doctors could have ever imagined, that her health is restored back to her speedily. In the name of Jesus, open up, the, open up your mouth for now. Let's close the portal of death over her hospital room. We close every gate of death every witch or warlock that is a nurse or a doctor we declare father that they get nauseated and can no longer come to work i pray father that an intercessor is replaced on her behalf in the name of jesus christ every portal of death over that hospital every portal of death god over that hospital room we seal it up now god we close it up right now father and we declare god that she walks up out of her bed in the name of jesus christ we call her forth god we call her out of that hospital room. We call her back into her house with her children, God. In the name of Jesus, she is a part of the altar of covered by God. Father, you said that she is covered by God. I pray, God, that she will be a testimony. She will testify that the Lord has heard us and you have answered our prayers. In the name of Jesus, we declare that she will not die, but she will live to declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, let's celebrate her victory. Come 
Kalada Banzura Banta Tala Kapaya Libanto Robanto Teria Tele de Bansuri Bede Velekepe Jacapara Bacapa La da Zanta and the Lekepaya Rocoto Shedia Tele de Bansura Bacapa Yacapa Palada Banzudia Tele de Banto Shede de Bansuia Reke Tele de Bansula Bede Velekepe Racapanto Shedia Tele de Bansura Batapacapa La Capa La Capa Yacala Capa I feel like come on keep praying in the Holy Ghost our prayers are stopping something our prayers are stopping something. Lebanto she kapa la kapa ya. Kele de banzu rebe de de ve ke vya se kapa. Ruto to she di etele de banzo de bele ve kapa ya. I see a ceasefire in the realm of the spirit. Kele de banzu rebanta she da bada va la kapa ya. Rebanto she da baze de de banzu rebanta kapa ya. The enemy has just received a ceasefire. El de danza da bando le kapa ya. Rebanto she de 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 banzu le bande ze de be rebe de bele kapa ya. Jadanda zara bandu la da banzu rabanda vala kapa ya. Je kampa para baka bande ze de etele de banzu de de ya prakata ya. Le bando she de etele de banzu rebe de be de be kapa bando de de banzu la kapa ya. Le kampa para kata ta ta da banzu rebe de Le kepe je de 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 banzu rabanta da 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 banzu le de banda la kapa la kapa pa pa reke te te de 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 banzu la kapa ando la kapa ya le kamba rabanda le de de banse rabanto sheria te de de banze de beke pi rakata da 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 banzu la kapa ya kapa ra da 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 za da vara vala kapa zu rabanda de de banzu ya kade de de banzu la banda la kapa mba la kapa rebe de 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 banzu rabanda vara vala kapa ya le banzu she de 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 banzu rabanda Vele vele kapisia, rakapam pam paria pala da da banzu de ya brakato, le bando la kapora ba kapa, la kapa par rakapa. I see in the realm of the spirit a fatal car accident that was scheduled for one of you, but when you left here, but the devil is a liar. I heard God say that has been stopped. In the name of Jesus Christ, le bande je de vaso de rebeke paya la kapanda le de vaso. It was an assignment from hell. I actually see the the accident happen, but because you're in the right place and at the right time, that was stopped from you. Ke le vaso rebeke paya. So if you drive home and you see an accident, I want you to thank God because it had your name on it. Ze de 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 brabanto la kapaya. Le bando ze de 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 breke di de 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 banso de ve de le kapaya. Kala da banzu rebe de ve de kapanto. Shata zada ba la kapado la kapada ba da ba raba kapaya. One thing about prayer, because I was getting ready to stop and it just, I, I didn't have the, the burden hadn't lifted is that you don't care about nobody else's time. Stop caring about people's time. When the burden hasn't lifted, there is something the Holy Ghost wants to intercede through you to stop and it's urgent. My sister prophet is Leslie Osei. She shared, I know, right? She's so lit. She shared her testimony um, just last week, I think. But you guys know that she has six children under six years old. And all she does is preach fire. And during the last month of her um, pregnancy, the Holy Ghost was telling me to pray for her, intercede for her. And I was like, but why? Because she already got five kids. You know me, I'm like, you just keep popping them out. It's easy. And... I wouldn't never tell her why, but I, every day I was like, hey, you had a baby yet? You had a baby yet? You had a baby yet? And she was like, no. And I was like, girl, if I can go up there and pull it out for you, I would. We're so ridiculous. But she's like, I haven't had the baby yet. But she didn't know why I was asking her because I didn't want to scare her about anything. <clears throat> so she shares her testimony because I didn't know. You know, every time God doesn't tell you why he told you to do something, so even though it didn't make sense because she prays, like that's all she does all day long. I'm like, she don't need my prayers, but I'd be praying for my friend, but I'm just saying for this. Y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So anyway, she shares her testimony. She says that <clears throat> while she was showing, she had already announced that she was pregnant, she began to bleed profusely. And she says, yeah, obviously that's miscarriage, right? Like bleeding, like pads upon pads. And she was like, she was still coming. She had to minister that day at church, so she still did that. And she went, and she went into prayer. She told her husband, and she told her mom. And they went, they went to war and prayer. And she was like, God, the devil will not mock me. She said, I have a grace to carry children. I've had six children under six. 
I have a grace to carry children and the enemy wants to mock me by having a public loss with my sixth child. The enemy won't mock me. She didn't complain. She didn't tell nobody else. I didn't know. She didn't tell anybody. She didn't, she didn't bother because how many of you know that when you're going through something, you have your core people that is going to pray that thing through. She didn't bother with it. She still went to church. She still prayed. She did, still did what she with bleeding. Then she began to have dreams. And in those dreams, I think she said the doctor wanted to do a cesarean section, but she knew it was going to lead to her death. So she began to go into war for prayer. So in her pregnancy, she barely even rarely slept. Every day in the midnight hour until the early morning, she would be in tongues. She would be warring because she knew something that nobody else did, which was that there was an attack on her life. She said when she got to the doctor, she didn't even, she literally gives birth like a Hebrew woman. Like she has never had an epidural. All six babies pushes out in 30 seconds. <laughs> she says she goes into labor with this one. And the doctor says, oh, the cord is wrapped around her neck. We're going to have to give you a cesarean section. So while her legs are up, she's like, in the name of Jesus, I command this cord to unwrap from around this baby's neck. My brother, Apostle Dominic Osei says, I stand in the office of an apostle and I command you to get that cord from around your neck. They looked at, and they're doing this while the doctors are staring at them. Because how many of you know when you're in, you don't, ain't no coos. You already got your legs up. You're already hanging out. Ain't no need to be pretty now. They looked at this, they looked at the scan again. They said, oh, there's no cord around her neck. Which lets you know that there was an assignment from hell to get her in that C-section like she saw. As soon as they began to pray, her centimeters went from four to 10. She pushed the baby out like she did all the others. Hey, Amen. Amen. And I wept when I heard, her and I are very close, but I wept when I heard that because she didn't tell me. But that is what it looks like when you're anointed to be somebody's friend. Because everybody doesn't have the anointing to be her friend. Everybody doesn't have the anointing to be your friend. Everybody doesn't have the anointing to be my friend. That when the, when, when the Holy Ghost say pray, you don't have to know why you go rebakapa jekante zele kampaya rikete kelele bantu rebakapa and you pray like you're praying for yourself and the holy ghost will confirm to you why and then i went back to her and i like i literally like all our messages you had a baby yet you had a baby today you went to labor today you in the hospital today where you at today you having a baby you push the baby out you push the baby i said girl this is why i was asking you this because i knew something was wrong and I knew how she pushes out baby. She doesn't tell anybody she's headed. So I just knew I had to be on guard every day, ready to pray. So all I'm saying is, is anytime you have a pause in your spirit, listen to that. Don't assume because somebody looks powerful that they don't need your prayers. If the Holy Ghost stop everything and say, pray for Tiffany, y'all better pull over on the side of the road and get in the tongues for me, baby. I ain't too proud to beg, pray. I think that is one of the benefits I have of having covered by God is having thousands of people all over the world praying and interceding on my behalf who are filled with the Holy Ghost. Prayer is powerful. Prayer keeps people alive. Prayer keeps people alive. Amen. As always, I don't know how to land the plane, so we can get ready to give. Um, I'm going to be announcing our next international cover by God soon, but I do need you to give so that we can pay for it because I don't want to pay for it by myself. Amen. Because you're anointed to give. Amen. You are anointed to give. So I pray that you go to coveredbygod.co. You can give online. You can give, uh, oh, there's a text to give number right there. You can text give to that phone number. You can give via Cash App. Our Cash App is Dollar Sign Millions Conference. It all goes to Covered by God. That is our only Cash App. So it's Dollar Sign Millions Conference. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it. But please give. You are anointed to give. So please give to our ministry. If we've been a blessing to you, please give. And um, 
We also have, I don't know if I announced it to you all, but we have Covered by God Houston <laughs> happening on the 28th of July. Covered by God Houston is happening on July 28th. So please go, oh, you can go to online right now and get your ticket. So you can go to coveredbygod.co. Uh, if you're watching online and you're in the Houston area or you know surrounding areas, go. It's gonna be very good. It's gonna be powerful. I'm excited. There's gotta be a reason that God wanted me to have two of these in one month, because y'all know me, it would have never happened. So go get your ticket. Um, it's gonna be powerful. Have I forgotten anything else? Are we good? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everybody that came and everybody that's watching online. I plead the protection of Psalms 91 over everybody. A thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come nigh us. I pray, Father, that everybody attached to cover by God is always at the right place at the right time. I pray, Father, that you would divert us away from any madman or any situation, God, that is not safe for us. And I pray that we are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Ghost that would make us listen to your voice and not go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ rolls out in front of us like a red carpet that we walk on, Father. And I pray, God, that it keeps us safe and that you go before us. I pray that Exodus 23 is our portion, God, that the fear of the Lord will go before us and that just people just stop messing with us because we got work to do and they be aggravating us. And we just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Spirit himself convicts us whenever a complaint reaches our lips. We ask, Father, that you put a guard on our mouth, even if you have to do it like that you did Zacharias in Luke chapter one, where you just muted him until the promise came. Father, do the same, put a guard on our mouth because I make a proclamation over your people today that we will walk into the promised land and the timing that you set for us and not in 40 years. Spirit of the living God, do a new thing in our lives. I pray, Father, that you will make paths in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, something like that. God, do a new thing. And I just thank you for it now. I pray that the angels of the Lord that are assigned to our life walk us to our car, take us home, Father, and for the rest of the year, make sure that they bring to pass the prophetic word and the promises that you have loosed over our life. Father, we love you. We thank you. We magnify your holy name. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will put a new song on our tongue that we can praise our Father. Father, when we think about the heavens and the earth that you made and the work of your hands, the one thing that we can say is, who, are, who am I that you are mindful of me? Father, we declare, who are we that you are mindful of us? Let, it, let them testify when they look at our lives, say, who is that man? Who is that woman that God is mindful of them? And we will declare that it is I am that I am that sent us. We thank you, Father, that everything you said to us comes to pass in this season. In the name of Jesus, for you make everything beautiful in your time. And I thank you for the Kairos moment, God, that is in this timing, that you are not bound by man's time, but this is Kairos time, that as soon as we learn patience, is a posture, God, that what you promised us can happen for us in a weekend and not in 20 years. Father, we thank you for that now. And we thank you, God, that every single day for the rest of this month is the fire and the hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces. We thank you that the heavy hand of God slams down the gavel of justice and rends us justice on our behalf for our situation. And we pray, God, that every monitoring spirit receives ir irreparable division from us in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you that there is no competition or no counterfeit in our lives. What you said is ours is ours. We will stop talking and we will hold our peace, God, and we will watch you, watch you fight for us. We declare today, God, that you will avenge us speedily. We declare today that you will answer us speedily. We declare today that you will help us speedily. We declare, Father, that you will deliver us speedily. And we declare today, God, that today is a day that our health has sprung forth speedily. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.